Hi everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff and I'll be your host for the show. If you've had an encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. Tonight's guest is Cam Garcia. Cam, welcome to the show. Hey, Vic. Thank you for calling. Thanks for being here. Cam, please give us a brief bio on yourself. My name is Cam. I'm 22. I uh, work as uh, strip the furniture and refurbishing furniture. I love going outside, love playing sports. I'm always loving to hang with my brother. You just mentioned that you love going outside after what's happened to you. Has it kind of tarnished that a little bit, or do you still like going out as much as ever? During the day, I really like going outside, but at night, it, it is kind of the thing that, um, you know, ever since what happened, I, I really just not very comfortable being out after 10 or 11 o'clock. Unless I'm in the car. Well, I can understand that. I'm so glad in the pre-interview that you let me know that you thought that going out during the daytime in areas where dogmen are is safe. I hate the idea of you going out during the daytime thinking that a dogman might not be there because there are more encounters that are reported during the daytime than at night. Oh, yeah, that's some of the information that you, you really told me. I didn't really believe that they would have the guts to be out there during the day or expose themselves that early. Well, they don't fear much. I don't know of anything that they fear, really, since they are an apex predator, but yeah, I'm glad you at least know that now. Kim, growing up, were you interested in cryptids like Sasquatch? Oh, yes. Since I could pick up a book, I was reading about Sasquatch. My favorite was the Loch Ness Monster. So, I mean, that's what I was always reading, always trying to discover if the surgeon's photo was real or fake, and then when I actually found out it was fake... That even got me more into it to where all these other pictures were coming from. Imagine what you would have thought when you were reading about these cryptids if you knew someday down the road you'd actually run into one. Yeah, it was a scary encounter, but yeah, to be honest, I, I believed in it, but you know, there's always the back thing in my head just saying, no, nah, these things are just creatures that don't exist. People are just seeing things, but they are out there. It's easy to think that until you run into one. What's the topography like where you live? Mainly, it really is just like a suburban neighborhood. There is a park literally like right behind my house, and there's a creek that runs along it. As you go into the creek, you are going into a lot of wood line. Not deep woods, but more of like a, it's like a creek with a lot of woods on the side of each. It is a very steep into the creek, so it is kind of hills. You have to climb up to get out of the creek. But like in the park area, it's really just a park. I mean, it's just a baseball field, a parking lot, and really big piece of open land. You can see the woods. But other than that, I mean, it's not really a big thicket of woods. It's just a creek with trees on each side. You'll find it doesn't take all that much in the way of woods to hide these things. Do you mind mentioning the name of that creek that's behind your home? Yeah, it's called Ten Mile Creek, and actually I just looked it up and made sure that it was Ten Mile Creek. So Ten Mile Creek goes from, I believe, my house all the way out through DeSoto. You mentioned just a bit ago that you still enjoy going outside during the daytime, but has that experience taken away your ability to enjoy the woods, whether we're talking about daytime or night? No, I really actually want to find out what's going on out in that creek. And I have other parts of the country, but in my creek, I, I really want to actually find out what's in there, what's going on. Is this thing really dangerous? Is it just a bluff attack or will it really attack? So to answer the question, no, not really. I think I'm just more excited about what's out there. Well, trust me when I tell you they will attack. It doesn't seem to be something that happens with any kind of frequency, but on at least rare occasions, they will attack. So that's a lesson I hope you don't learn personally. (laughs) I hope not either. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Are you suffering from any unexpected side effects due to your encounters? I would say maybe two weeks after it happened, I was having nightmares. I was waking up in sweats. I was just Every time I hear a howl, I picture the creature's face in my head. And sometimes I would wake up, I would look out my window, and sometimes I would think I see it. 
And then especially in my nightmares, I would see it like if it was climbing up the wall of my house trying to get to me. That happened for about two weeks, and I, mean, I, was, I was very terrified. I really didn't want to tell anyone because the only person I knew was me, my brother, and my dad. We didn't tell my mom because if we had told her, she would have never let us outside again. Well, unfortunately, what you went through there, that's pretty common. A lot of eyewitnesses go through the same thing. Please tell us about those howls you were just mentioning hearing at night. Oh, those howls are just terrifying. They're nasty. It sounds like dogs are getting killed. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like if they have like a, a strep throat trying to talk and they're screaming at the same time. We hear them maybe once or twice a week. And when we hear these things, we know they're there. We don't know how close they are, but they sound like they're just right down the creek. Like, if we step outside, if we look down in the creek, it sounds like if they're right there. But from experience, we've done that. Just to go look and see if they're there. We look, we have our lights, and there's nothing there. So we're guessing as loud as they can be, they can make it sound like they're outside, and they're actually maybe a mile or two away from us. When you have an encounter away from home, that's one thing, but when you hear that kind of activity right out your door, that takes it to a whole new level. When we were doing the pre-interview for this show, you said something very strange happened. Please tell the listeners about it. When we were talking, there was something that happened just to be outside our door, maybe 40 feet from our door. I tried to take pictures, and I tried to do it with a flash. The only thing I got from the flash was some eyes, but when I took it without the flash, it it shows this creature, and when I see it now that I really see it, it, it's like on two, and it has the long snout, but it, it's very, very small. Like I, like I was wondering when I had told you if they would send out their pups, if if dogmen did have their own litter, if they would send out their pups to go hunt on their own for rabbits or anything. We do have a bunch of rabbits and mice and rats around here, but that's why I was wondering if. They did send out their litter to go hunt on their own because this is what it looked like. It looked like this little creature was maybe three feet, four feet tall and was just looking at us. It was just in the middle of the street. And when we started taking pictures, this thing ran back towards the creek. As we were talking and then you told me about seeing that thing, I was wondering what in the world's going on. That's not the first time I've been on the phone with an eyewitness when activity like that's taken place. But I guess you never do get used to it. You never know if these things will pop up during an interview or they'll pop up at the unexpected moment. That's true. They work on their own schedules. I guess you never do know when they're going to pop up. Oh, yeah. Without revealing any of the details, to date, how many encounters have you and your family had with dog men? Four or five encounters. But me and my brother personally have only seen it twice. One time's too many. I really feel for you if you've all had four or five encounters. One night in June or July of 2014, you and your brother were at a place called Lions Park when the two of you had an interesting experience. Please tell us what happened. Okay. Me and my brother, we were outside throwing the baseball, and I'm looking away from the park, and my brother's looking at the park. I do the ball at him, and he goes, hey, look, look at that that mother and her pup. They're just right there. They're looking at us. I told him, I was like, all right, let's go follow them. Let's see if they'll attack us or if they'll run away. Because, you know, the coyotes around that area are not very scared of humans. We have a bunch of them in that creek, a bunch of them in that park at night. I told him just to grab a badge just in case they attacked. And we started to tell them. So as we were telling them right from behind, they started to run towards the creek and inside, like a creek that had a tree in it that I guess it went underground. So we tried to go, and as we follow them into the creek, we get to that tree, and we see them, and we're dumb on ourselves, trying to get them out, poking them with the bat under the tree. And then then you just start hearing them howl and cry, and that's when we heard this nasty, blood-curdling scream coming from the creek. On previous times, we've heard this scream, but we've always thought it was just dogs. We never took a big chance of knowing what it was or how it worked you know we're just like okay man these are just dogs with loud screams so we heard this thing and it sounded super close so that's when my brother decided to tell me he goes hey i think we need to stop picking on this mother and her her pup because i think they're calling for help they're calling for more then we started hearing the house more and more 
I kept being ignorant. I kept on like, okay, it's not going to come. It's probably just trying to scare us so that they can get out while we were trying to run away. Then that's when we started hearing running through the creek. And when I say running, I mean it's bipedal running, not your average running on force. So that's when my brother's like, okay, I know you hear that. I know you hear that, right? And I was like, yeah, I think that is the time. I think that's our cue. We have to go. So we, we start climbing out of the creek. And as we're starting to walk away, we hear this thing jump into a deeper part of the creek. And at the time, the creek was maybe in the shallow area. It was maybe about two feet deep. But in the deeper area, it was maybe about five to six feet deep. So we heard this thing jump in the water. And I was like, did you hear that? I got to the edge of the creek and I started taking pictures and more and more pictures. And I took pictures of what it seems to have eyes in the water, like if it was looking at us trying to hide from us. So then I told my brother, like, I know you see that, right? And he goes, yeah, I see that. So let's get out of here. Can we stop hanging around here? I wanted to see what it was. I kept on trying to see him. So I finally took my brother's advice, and I was like, okay, let's just get out of here. So we started turning around. We started walking. Then we hear this very, very deep growl from behind us. Very deep growl. It sounded huge. It sounded like a coyote on steroids. My brother and I started running. And he turns around to see this black shape coming out of the water. And then he starts just running. I wanted to see fully what it was. This thing is getting out of the water and it's starting to climb the creek. My brother's already maybe 20, 30 feet ahead of me. And I'm just stuck there. Like, what is this thing? Is this thing for real? Is this really something that I've always thought in the back of my head didn't exist? So I look at this thing and it stood up. And it looked at me, and it stood seven feet tall. It was damp because it just got out of the water. But I remember the eyes were huge. The muzzle was long. The arms were not long. They were very short. They were maybe, I would say, a human's length, but maybe about six inches shorter. They was very big, though. The legs were huge. And the color of the fur was silver and black together. But there was no smell. I don't know if it's just because it came out of the water, but there was no smell on this thing. It looked at me and it growled at me. And it kind of just stood up and looked at me and it got right back down on force. Then it started to charge at me. That's when my brother yelled at me from my head and goes, run, get out of there. So I started running. I hear this thing coming up behind me. And maybe we're about 30, 40, maybe 50 feet away from our house, from the garage. My brother is calling my dad open the garage, there's something out here. There's something chasing me and brother. That's what he calls me. He goes, there's something chasing me and brother right now. you you got to open the garage. So my dad, he, of course, he opens the garage, and I'm running. I'm I'm ready for this thing to pounce from behind, on top of me from behind and, and just start tearing me apart. Because in the back of my head, I'm like, dang, I just messed with a man's family, a creature's family, and he's going to tear me apart for messing with them. So I'm running, I'm running. And as I'm turning the corner to make a right, I look up and there's a camera. And I see it, but I don't even pay attention to it. So I make a right and I run back home. And my dad, he's telling me, run, run. He sees this thing running after me. And we get back to the garage. And it kind of just stops and then turns around. It's still looking at us and it's backing away on fours. And as it kind of backs out around the corner. And then that's when we see the mother and the pup go right past our vision of what we see of the park. It passes the vision of us and goes into the creek. And then this when we see this coyote or whatever this thing is, we see it on the fours. It's maybe four and a half, five feet tall. And it's just looking at us. And I swear, it, it, it gave us this grin or smile of enjoyment that it terrified us. Or maybe it just looked at us as, don't mess with my family again. Or don't mess with my park. Or don't mess with my creek anymore. Or don't even come outside anymore. Because this will happen. But as it was walking by us, it just kind of looked at us. It growled at us. And it like it smiled at us. And it just followed the mother and the pup right back into the creek. And that was the end of that night. We didn't come back outside. Actually, we didn't come back out to that park after 10 anymore just one more time after that just to see what it was 
and we kind of, okay, this is, I don't have a good feeling out here after 10 anymore. Let's just not come back out here again. Well, that's night you're never going to forget. That's a very terrifying night. Very. Oh, I'd say so. When you saw that dog man climb out of the water and stand up, how close was it to you? I was maybe 20 feet away from it. That's too close. Did the dog man seem to have a good relationship with the coyote mother and pup you saw that night? It came after you, but did you ever see anything that would make it a concrete fact in your mind that it was definitely protecting them? I would say so because when it got out of the water, we heard running in the water and in the creek still, like on the side, like on the shallow part. We heard something running. In my head, I'm guessing that was the pup and the mother running so that he can deal with me and my brother. So I'm guessing that was the pup and the mother running through the creek to get to a safer part. Kind of how, like, he's going to deal with us. He's like, I'll deal with them, y'all run. I'm 100% sure that that was his wife or his girlfriend, and that was his son. From the way you explained it, it sure does sound like it was protecting them. You mentioned the surveillance camera that might have captured that event on film. Have you tried to find out if it did film your encounter? When my dad actually saw the, the, the fear in my face, the terror in my face, I was crying when I actually got up to him and I was like, Dad, I was like, what happened? I was like, these things are not supposed to exist. What What's going on? And I told him, I was like, there's a camera out there. I was like, do you want to go see if, if it caught anything? And he goes, you know what? That didn't even cross the back of my head, but you know what? That's what we're going to do tomorrow. He went up there to the police department and he tried to report what happened last night. And he's like, there's a camera out there. My son was running towards it. And this thing that was running after him was right on the trail of the camera. Because we live where the Santa Fe, Main Street, and Wheatland area is at. And they said all cameras on those streets were all down last night. Coincidentally, they were down last night. So my dad was like, you know, this is ridiculous. He goes, I want to know what was on that camera. And they kept saying, no, the cameras were not working. And plus, you need a subpoena to get the videos for anything that's happened. My dad's like, this is ridiculous. Why don't you just show me what was going on? I don't believe that these cameras were down because we saw something. The cops, they knew they had seen stuff or heard stuff about 10 Mile Creek. I know for a fact. They were trying to hide it. I live in a neighborhood where people are from the Navy, the Army, or the Marines. So whenever I try to bring this up saying, hey, do you believe that these cameras were down yesterday? And I brought it up, what I saw, and they were very quiet. They were like, oh, we can't talk about it. Oh, we can't talk about it. We really can't talk about it. I only got one answer, and which is my neighbor across the street. He goes, well, all I'm going to tell you is that me and my wife, we went for a walk at night. Something grabbed our dog. That's all I can tell you. So the cops, and of course, the government, they know if something's there in that 10-mile creek. And especially hiding video evidence from me and my dad, that proved the point. Yeah, that's all too convenient, that excuse they gave you about why they couldn't show you the footage. When that dogman was on all fours, how were its proportions? Did it look like a giant coyote or did it look like a giant mutated one? It looked like more just a giant coyote. I mean, there's nothing that would say that this thing was different from any other coyote I've seen. It's just the size was huge. I mean, it was four feet standing, maybe five feet standing on fours. I mean, this thing was huge. It, it kind of slouched over when it, it was went on fours because its arms were shorter than its legs, but it was big. The ears were kind of clipped. You know, they weren't as pointy. They were kind of clipped, like if it, it's been attacked or something, which, in my surprise, that's weird. Cause I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what would attack that thing. But it was big. It had the long muzzle. The, the muzzle was huge, very long. The teeth were very long. The canines, maybe four or five inches, they were just huge. The paws, even though the arms were short, the, the, the paws were fat and stubby. Like, they were huge. Like, but weren't really paws. You can kind of see like if they were hands, but without the fingertips. They were like just the, like you can only see the knuckles. Like if 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 they had no fingers, it was just all knuckles. The legs, they were big. They were very big. 
You said it had a long muzzle. Was that because of how big this creature was, or was that muzzle disproportionately long? Uh, I would say that just because of the size, maybe the muzzle was longer. Because I've seen coyotes, the muzzles are not that big, but they can be somewhat long sometimes. But because of the size of this one, it was huge. It was way longer. Like, way, way longer. And you said its canines were four to five inches long. Yes, I got a very, very good picture of his canines. It showed his teeth at me. It showed them very, very clearly at me, showing that, why are you picking on my family? What have we done to you? It showed no fear. It just looked at me and it says, you know what? You want a piece of them? You're going to have to go through me. And that's when it started to snarl at me and give his big old growl, showing those big old fangs at me. I was like, oh, my God. I was so frozen in fear that I didn't know what to do except just look at it. It might not have been able to speak, but it definitely got its message across loud and clear. How long was it before you could function in a somewhat normal capacity again after that experience? I would say maybe about two weeks after, maybe three weeks after, because I was just so afraid of, well, first of all, if I saw any kind of coyote, I'd go back inside. Because I was like, okay, if there's a coyote out here right now, then that thing's nearby. I am not going outside. I am not even getting 50 or 100 feet to within these coyotes out here in this park, especially at night. I am not getting anywhere close. Besides coyotes themselves, if I heard howls, I was terrified. I would literally go back to the images and sounds that I heard when this thing was coming through the creek to come and rescue its family. For two weeks straight, three weeks maybe, I was, coyote, I'm going inside. Howls. I picture and remember the sounds I heard that night. After the two, three weeks, that's when I decided to tell my brother, let's go outside, let's see what's going on. Let's go out there tonight and let's see if this thing will come out again. We went out there and we brought the same bat and I had brought a little knife. And I was like, that's kind of dumb on my part, bring a little knife, put like a five inch blade on it. But I had brought it with me. And we went out there, and we just kind of sat out there. And we started hearing the winds, and it sounded like howls, but they weren't. But then that's when we heard the howls. It sounded far away, but when we were sitting there, I don't know if it was our mind playing tricks, but we were hearing things in the creek. We were hearing, like, if it was footsteps. It may have been this frogs hopping or something, but we started hearing things just moving through the water, and everything just kind of went quiet. And then that's when we were like, okay, there's something out here and it's looking at us. In our head, it was like something was saying, why are y'all on my property? This is my territory. Y'all need to leave. This thing was telling us, leave or something bad's going to happen. Like it had eyes on us. So as soon as we got that feeling or the message, we got up off the bench in the park and we went straight back home. If you're sitting on a bench in the park at night when you know these things are around, how far was that bench from your house? I would say the bench is maybe like 150, 200 feet away. Ooh. Do you see that as maybe being a little foolish, sitting out on that bench that far from your home at nighttime when you know that a dog man's around like that and it's already shown that it's not all that happy with you? I would say yes, but then when you want to know things, your mind kind of gives you that ability to tell you, you know, you can do it. You go out there and see what you can do. But the biggest thing that I did that was just to get over the fear, stand up to it. But I'm a heavy set guy. When I say heavy set, I mean, I'm not known for running. But I know if something's out there and it's going to get me, I can run. My adrenaline rush will make me feel like I'm the fastest man in the world to get to where I need to go to be safe again. I can appreciate those sentiments, but you do realize that there's no way you're going to outrun a dog man if it's got getting you on its mind. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. My dream death was always, if I'm going to die, I'd rather die by cryptid. If I'm going to go out there and meet Bigfoot, I'd rather go meet it. And if it kills me, it kills me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But my thing was, I've always wanted to go out there and see what's out there. And if it kills me... At least I knew, at least I died knowing that these things are out there. I can appreciate you feeling that way, but I've got no doubts that the idea of that is a lot more glamorous than the experience ever would be. 
I can't even imagine how horrible it would be to be killed by a dog man when you think about what it's going to use to kill you and how it's going to use those tools. I can't even imagine what it'll do, to be honest. I hope I'm dead. God forbid that I ever have to encounter a dog man again or whatever the thing was. That if it gets to me, I hope it's a quick death because I don't want it to ever eat me alive. Like, that would be the worst scenario. Oh, I'd say. I've spoken with people who have been attacked by these things. I can't go into the details, but trust me, there are a thousand ways to die that are going to be a lot less painful and a lot less traumatic than going out by the claws and teeth of one of these things. Trust me on that. Who's had a harder time getting over that encounter, you or your brother? I would say me, because my brother, from what he saw, he saw a dark shape coming out of the water. That's all he told me. Now, he says that at times he still feels like when he hears that growl from anything, he'll picture it and he'll remind himself, like, oh my gosh, what was behind me when I started running? But for me, I saw it. I saw this thing get out of the creek, climb the creek, and stand on its feet and look at me. The eyes were the most terrifying part because it's like it read straight through you. It looked me straight in the eyes and it 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 made, made me froze in place. I mean, so to be honest, I would say me because for a while, my brother was okay. He didn't really care. He was still going out at night. He was still hanging out with people at the park. For me, he was like, come on, you brother, you want to go and chill with us? And I'm like, nah, I'm okay. I am okay. I, I'm good. I'm not going out there. I don't care how many people are out there. I, I'm not going out there. You mentioned the fact that its front legs were shorter than most dogmen that you've heard people talk about. Most eyewitnesses report freakishly long arms on dogmen. You say the one that you saw wasn't that way. Its front legs were actually somewhat short. If you looked at this dogman from the side, what kind of position would you describe its back being in? Would it have a rake like a hot rod where the back end's higher than the front? Would it be level at the back, or maybe would it slope up somewhat like a hyena? The best way I can put it is a kangaroo with maybe a foot longer arms. If that's the case, as it was standing and you looked at it broadside, its shoulders would have been lower than its hips. Yes. So when I say a kangaroo, you know the kangaroo's muzzles are kind of long, but they're not as long, but this thing was longer. So when I say it stood, it wasn't like if the legs were bending, like how a dog's do, or like when a chicken's leg bends back, this thing was standing all the way. And now it had that point where a dog, like when a dog's standing, it has, or whenever you try to pick up a dog to give it a hug, it, it's, its legs are kind of bent, but it had that bent in it. But the rest of its, its, its body stood straight up. But when it kind of got back down to where it was trying to get back on force, it looked like a kangaroo. And it, it, the arms kind of had to like slowly get to the ground because they were shorter than its legs. So when it was getting down, it was slowly getting there. And I think that's when my brother, when it was trying to get to all fours, I think that's when my brother called for me and said, start running, run. So I think because it took longer to get to its front paws, I think that's why I think I had maybe a three to four second getaway chance from being attacked from this creature when it got on fours and started running after me. If it had such strange proportions, did it have a strange running style or did it look somewhat coordinated? It looked very coordinated to me. I'm pretty sure, very sure that you've seen the Gable film. Oh yeah, but that was a man, Micah Gruza, in a ghillie suit that was in that film. The way how a lot of people said there was no way a man could be running like that at such a angle, how he kept cutting in and out. Well, this thing was running exactly like that. Exactly like that. That's the best picture I just remember. That's the best picture I, that reminded me of how it was running. Yeah, there's still a lot of people who think that video was real, but it is a faked film. Mike Gruza, he's the one who you see in that film, running at the camera like that. I was really impressed when I first saw that film, and it was really hard for me to believe that that was a man in a suit. But Linda Godfrey and some other reporters, from what I understand, 
They went back out to that property when Micah Gruza agreed to prove how he had faked that film. From what I understand, she said that he went up to the point where you saw the subject in the film start running towards the camera. He went to that exact same spot, got down, and did the exact same run right towards the group of reporters. And he did it so impressively, everybody in that group of reporters reeled because it was so creepy as they saw him running towards them that way. The way he ran, that's exactly how this creature ran. That's exactly how it started to run. Because when I started running, I looked back and I see it running. It was running like in a sideway, if that's the best way to say it. Like if it couldn't run straight, it was running like at a side point, like a side view. More like a gorilla running. It doesn't run straight at you. It runs like from a side. That's how this thing was running. That had to be something to see. It was very terrifying. Oh, I am sure it was. I do believe you. One thing that makes it even more believable in my mind is the way you describe those four limbs. It's not a well-known fact, but there are eyewitnesses out there who report seeing a dog man who didn't have freakishly long arms. They described seeing a dog man with shorter front limbs that are held up in a very similar way to the way you described the one that you saw that night. So, I definitely believe you. What you're describing sounds strange, but it is in line with stories that I've heard several times before. I didn't know that there are no Bigfoot. My dad, he automatically assumed, he goes, maybe it was a Bigfoot. I was like, no, this ain't no Bigfoot. He goes, what about a Chupacabra? I was like, yes, we do have reports of Chupacabras here in Texas, but most Chupacabras don't stand seven feet tall. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, we both know what you saw that night, and it wasn't a Chupacabra. One night, you and your family were watching TV when your dad brought something to your attention. What happened that night? My brother was in the shower. I was facing away from the window. My dad was sitting to where he could see the window pane, and my mom was sitting, like she was pointing towards the wall, so she really couldn't see it. My dad was like, why is Angel growling at the window? And at the time, our light was off. So, you know, we just heard our dog, Angel, she was just barking and growling and growling and growling. My dad was like, you know, what's going on? Let me go check. Let me go see what's going on. So we turned the light on, and we see this thing, this creature, on all fours, like maybe four feet tall from standing on fours, was just growling at Angel. Now, we couldn't hear this thing growling, but as soon as we turned the lights on, it looked up at us, and that's when we started to hear it growl, and it growled pretty loud at us. My mom was like, what is that right there on our porch? And as soon as my dad unlocked the door, my mom was like, are you crazy? Why are you going to open the door to go out there and see what that thing is? He goes, I want to know what it is. I'm looking at my dad. I was like, dad, you're crazy. That thing looks like it'll tear you apart. And my brother, like I said, he's in the shower. He's oblivious to what's going on out here. And my dad, as soon as he unlocks the door, this thing makes two leaps to get to the middle of the street. And it was incredible to see this thing, how fast it can move. So as soon as it made the two leaps to get to the street, my dad opened the door, he went out there, and I'm like right on the porch. My mom, she's like, Cameron, get inside, get inside. I'm so curious of what's going on. And then that's when, you know, my dad tells me, get inside. So I step back inside. We're still seeing this thing from our porch to the street. So as my dad's walking towards it, it starts heading towards the park. And as it starts heading towards the park, it, it, it starts to get to where it's still on our driveway. Because we have a driveway, and then it kind of leads into the park, but into the creek. So as it, it's at the tip of our driveway. My dad gets in his truck, and he turns on his highlights. When he turns on his highlights, this thing stands up. To stand it up, maybe this creature thought that my dad's vehicle was a creature itself. So this creature stands up and starts to growl. And my dad, when he heard this thing growling at him, it, 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 it brought fear into him because he didn't know what he was looking at. My dad told me, he goes, maybe this was a demon. This was a demon that was trying to attack our family. Going back to it, my dad looked at this thing and he's driving actually towards it. And this creature is backing up onto all the way until it gets to the creek. And it gets to the creek, it has like a drop. And this creature is still on two and kind of slowly gets back onto the forest because it's climbing its way back down. And it doesn't take its eyes off my dad at all until it's out of sight. But he says that when he was looking at this thing with his highlights on it, 
This thing was looking at it, showing its teeth, like no fear at all. But in a way, I guess it kind of saw the vehicle. If this thing hits me, it's going to hurt it if it rams into it. So this creature, I guess it knew that it just started to back away, and it, it backed all the way down into the creek until my dad couldn't see it anymore. I remember after that, we weren't allowed to be outside for a little bit after dark. Did your dad say why he walked out the door and approached such a formidable unknown creature? It was pride. He says he had to protect his family. He felt it was the right thing to do, to know what this creature was. He wanted to see if this was just like a prank or if it was just an ugly dog trying to scare our dog. And, you know, he just said that he wanted to make sure that this creature, whatever it was, would never come back. Of course, that didn't happen. And this thing kind of just stuck around in the creek area for a little bit. That wasn't a good move. Two days later, your dad was driving home with your brother when he had another encounter. Please tell us about what happened there. Okay. My dad just picked up my brother from school. They were driving towards our house. There's a front way and a back way to get to our house because we live on the corner in the middle of a neighborhood. They're driving, and they said that they're turning a corner. They see this creature in someone's yard. It was poking his nose around, and... As soon as they spotted, they kind of slowed down and stopped, and I guess this thing turned around and looked at them. They said it didn't show any aggressiveness towards them. It kind of just, like, it was in fear. They said they saw this thing kind of bend down and just take one leap over, like, a six, seven-foot fence. Easy. Just hopped it, no problem. We know that that house lives on the creek. So their assumption, they're, they're like, okay, this creature just hopped over the fence and just went into the creek. So my brother and my dad were like, what lives in this creek? What's going on? What really lives in this creek? So that's what their eyewitness testimony tells me, is that there is something that keeps living in this creek, and it lives around in this neighborhood, or just in Ten Mile Creek itself. It sure seems to be that way. Did your dad ever tell you if that creature he saw that day might have been the same one he saw two nights before? Yes, he says that was definitely the creature. He says it was definitely the creature. He says it was no doubt about it. That was the creature he saw. It had the muzzle. It had the body shape, especially when it kind of stood and looked at them, and it kind of bent down, and it took that leap. He says that was exactly the creature he saw. Yeah, so I came back. From what I understand, later that day, your mother had an experience of her own. Yes, yes. She was coming home from work, and from her job at that point, it would take her about an hour to get home, and she'd get off like around, I would say, 6, and she wouldn't get home until about 7.30. And as she was arriving home, it was kind of getting dark. It was getting to the point where it was getting kind of like in the dusk area. She was driving home, and she was turning into our neighborhood. But before you turn into our neighborhood, you could see an alley going down where there are houses on our neighborhood. You could see an alley. And she was driving, and she saw this thing digging what she said she thought it was trash but she said she saw it just kind of just messing with things in the alley and she slowed down to see it and she couldn't believe what she was seeing now our family is very religious and we're very whatever's out there it may just be demons it may be supernatural but she said that this thing looked at her in such a, a, a mean way as of mind your own business keep driving this is none of your business just keep driving She looked at it, and she described the very same thing we saw. And she says, this thing is not an animal. I don't know what it is with you. I don't think this thing is an animal. And she's always thought that this thing is a demon. That it's just a demon that's going around terrifying people. But she saw it digging through whatever it was digging. And as she slowed down, she saw it, and she was terrified by this thing as it looked into her. And like I said, these creatures, I feel like these things look into your soul and terrify you to the point of where you just don't want to mess with it ever again. You said your mom saw that dogman in an alley. How urban or rural is that area where she saw it? In other words, how close to the woods was it? Well, all these houses are very, very near a creek. If they wanted to hop the fence, they could jump right into the creek. So it's urban, but it's very close to the creek, where, like I said, if they wanted to just go fish in this creek, they can just hop their fence, Maybe walk maybe 20 feet, 30 feet, and they're right there at the creek. So it could make a pretty quick getaway if it wanted to. Oh, yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it sounds like it. 
Last Friday night, your mother saw something when she was taking the dog out. What did she see? Me and my brother, we went to my dad's to stay with him for the weekend. My mom said that she was taking out our dog, and she took him out, and she was looking towards the park. And as she was looking towards the park, she was looking at, because when our house, our house is literally, we have a back fence, but then we have like a bottom piece of land. And that land, it goes straight into the creek. So as she was taking out our dog, it was nighttime, and she saw something kind of just standing there, kind of just looking as if it was like wondering what she was doing. But the thing she felt as if it was looking at our dog, as if it was prey. It was just looking at her. And she said she saw this thing just standing there. She said definitely 100% sure it was standing. It was in the brush just looking at her. It was kind of moving back and forth, like if it was hesitating whether or not to go and attack or not. And she felt that fear of what is this thing. She automatically just grabbed our dog and she went inside. But before she went inside, she said she saw this thing kind of just, like if it was going to about to leap over the fence to get to her, but it kind of just backed off and kind of just went back down into the creek. Because she heard it go into the creek. She heard the splashing. And she said she heard the walking away as if it was just running down the creek again. After being through what your family has been through with these dog men, it's a wonder any of you go outside ever again. It's not that we're afraid to be outside anymore. It's just the fear of knowing what's really out there now, what the government's been trying to hide from us. It's really a great relief, but still scary to know that there are things out there that we really can't explain. But... In a way, it is great to know that there is something out there that we probably can't ever fight off if it ever comes face to face, but we know what to take for precautionary needs if we ever encounter it. We know not to be outside after 10 anymore. We know that if we hear the house, we know we have to come inside. We know if we hear or see any coyotes, we know we have to come inside. So there's always those warnings of knowing if that thing is nearby or not. So we have our signs. We're pretty set knowing when and when not to be outside. I want to remind you that just because it's not after 10, that's no guarantee you're not going to have a run-in with one. It could be 2 p.m. and you could have an encounter. So please keep that in mind if you are going to go out there. Oh, yes, sir. For sure. I started hearing more things about daytime occurrences. So I know that it's pretty dumb to be in the creek at all. But... I'm always having to look behind my back just in case. I always have my brother with me just so that we know that we can have a back-to-back situation. What was it like for you when you found out that there are so many people who have seen dog men? Relieved. I was more relieved than anything. You know, I thought I was really just the crazy one in this world that saw this thing. And that's when actually I found your YouTube channel and I started hearing all these stories Especially when I heard about the Michigan dog, man, that's when everything kind of just was a big sigh of relief because I I feel very, very like a leper, if that's the way to say it. Like, I would feel like a leper if I told anyone else because they would be like, no, there ain't no such thing as a dog, man. There's no such thing as all that. Now, they would say maybe Bigfoot, maybe the Loch Ness Monster, maybe the Chupacabra, but a dog, man, really? But when I started hearing all these stories about these creatures, that's when I started to get the peace of mind knowing that I'm not the only one that's seen these things out here. You know they're real. It doesn't matter if someone believes you or not. You know as a fact that they are out there, and that's all that matters. I don't care what people say. I don't care if they make fun of me anymore. If they ever want to have an experience, I'll tell them the signs. I don't want to give them that bad experience, but I can tell them the signs of when or what that thing is going to be out there. To me, it sounds like if they do want to have an experience, all they have to do is come over and hang out back by your place. Exactly. (laughs) That sure sounds that way. Does your family plan to move any time in the near future? Well, my mom and dad are separated. So my dad lives in a little city in Dallas is Oak Cliff. My mom lives here in Duncanville. She says that because her faith in God is so big that she doesn't really feel threatened. She feels that everything is okay. Now, she's talked about selling the house just to get to a smaller house, but my opinion, I think she wants to leave this area, especially the creek, because we live right on it. I mean, if you were to ever come over to this house, you would see what I'm talking about, how 
our land just goes straight into the creek. There is no separation between us, the house, or the creek. I could definitely understand her wanting to move. You told me that you and your brother during the daytime play in the same creek that you had that encounter in, just like you just mentioned on the interview here. Now that you know they come out in daytime hours, how does that make you feel? More adventurous, but also, like I said, more weary of our surroundings. We make sure that if we even think we see a den or a hole in the wall of the creek, we go around it. We don't just intently approach it. We kind of just go around it. If something's in there, like a dog man, it won't just leap out and grab us and pull us straight in. It would have to step out and drag us in. But that's the worst thing that we want to happen. But if we see a den or we see a hole or a makeshift structure, we kind of maybe get 30, 40 feet around it just to kind of step around it. And then we kind of just look in there and kind of just make sure that nothing's in there. But we don't ever approach it very close. We never get our past right in front of it. We we make sure that we're looking both left and right on those walls to make sure that there's no holes or dens around. I'd think twice about going out there and doing that. Let's talk about that howling again. Have you ever gotten the impression that it might be two, three, four, or more dog men howling at the same time? I really hope not. I really hope it's just one. Maybe this one is very lonely and it just it's trying to see if there's any other out there, but in the back of my mind, I believe that there maybe is. There's more than one that is trying to communicate with each other. Because when it's howling in the creek, it's howling off the walls, like it's echoing off the walls. So it's getting around. It's getting to far parts of the creek. Do I believe there's more than one? I really don't want to say yes because that kind of just makes me worry twice even more because I'm already afraid of just this one. But I would say, yeah, there's probably more than just two out there in that creek. Sounds like that just might be the case. You told me you have strong opinions about people who go out looking to have encounters with dog men. Please share those with us. People who go out looking for these things, they go out to get like a thrill. Oh, I seen it. I did it. But there's really nothing to be happy about when you see these things because you get terrified. You have nightmares about these things. You think that just because you saw one, it's going to go great on your resume one day. It's not It's not going to ever be on your resume because you can't put that in a real job interview. You know, they're going to be, oh, wow, this person's seen a dog man. Okay, this guy's crazy. Yeah, we're not going to hire him. These are not good things to have on your resume because, like I said, you hear these things. You hear a howl. You automatically assume, oh, my God, this creature's back again. There's just no possible way of ever wanting to see this creature because it's a very terrifying experience. I was afraid that I was going to get pounced on, but luckily, you know, I had that four to five second difference where I was able to make it back to the house without the creature landing on top of me. Now, for people who want to see this thing, I can tell you a couple of destinations of where to go to go and see one. Like, people have told me straight up since I started learning about Dogman I've done my research of where people say this is exactly where these things will come out and they will show themselves. So if people want to see these things, don't press charges against me if something does happen. I can appreciate your sentiments on going out and looking for these things. I even agree with them. But you just talked about going out and basically doing the same thing when you go into the creek and look at the banks for dens the way you did. Very true. Very true. You have a good point. I guess my thing is that, like I told you in the beginning, that if I was to die, I'd rather die from a cryptozoological death than being killed by a human or anything else in this world. Ew, I just don't understand that. Well, it's about time to wrap this show up, Cam. Do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? If anyone wants to go out there and see these things, don't approach them. If they show themselves to you, just take that as a medal of honor. If you feel these things are about to come at you, don't wait for it to come at you. Run. Run and make sure that there's nothing else behind you. Because you know, like you've told me from what you've heard, sometimes they like to get you to focus on one so that another one can come up behind you and attack you. But in my experience, don't stand there and look at the awe of this creature. Run. 
turn around, mind your own business, and run and get out of there. Well, thank you so much for your time and coming on the show and sharing the details of those encounters with us. I really do appreciate it. You're very welcome. Have a great night. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.